Um, hello, everybody. My name is Fawn Wood, and I come to you from the Satellite Cree Nation out here in Treaty 6 territory. We're actually on my homelands now. And um, when I think about how climate change has affected my life and uh, the, the changes I felt and seen and experienced in, in the 34 years that I've been on this earth, um, I've never really noticed until until we've we've seen changes around us us as indigenous people we are so in tune and and we believe everything is connected um our language our spirituality our medicines our practices it's all connected to the earth and it all it all ties back to our grassroots that's why we call it grassroots it's a part of the earth and um within the changes that we've seen lately i remember being a kid and being able to come out into our lands here and we had all kinds of medicines all kinds of medicine and you knew that there was going to be an abundance and you knew what time of year and how it was going to be ready and throughout climate change every year is like spinning a, a wheel of chance on how things are going to turn out i never thought that i would be able to say that i've experienced even a few seasons of drought i've experienced seasons where we had snow come in late and um all of that affects affects us holistically 
as indigenous people because we are so connected to the land you know my family being horse keepers and horsemen as well that affects a lot of how we take care of our animals and um you know we have such a close relationship with animals with the plant life with the insects with the medicines with water and air and everything around us it is so affected by each other that um, we're always said to walk lightly and tread lightly on Mother Earth and take care of it. And I think naturally Indigenous people, it doesn't matter what tribe you come from or what kind of belief system, that's one universal understanding that we have is to take care of our Mother Earth. And in return, she takes care of us with the abundant life and medicines and everything that she offers us. Our people have been living on these lands for thousands and thousands of years it, it, uh, since time immemorial, since before time was even recorded on this continent. And um, just for me, um, being in the age group that I am and s being able to say that I've seen changes in, in the landscape and how our plants and how our animals are here. And now we're starting to see uh, different species of animals and insects in our lands that we've never seen before. That makes me think like, I wonder how things were 50 years ago or a hundred years ago. And that makes me really question and, and, and um, question the direction we're going. And I hope that um, our young people sense that urgency as well, because um, ultimately they are going to, um, what, what, how we take care of the earth is going to affect how our children and our, um, our lineage is going to, is going to enjoy mother earth. In our language, we call her Kigawi no Aski, which means our mother earth. And her being our mother, we treat our mother res with respect and love. And my message to, to anybody now is that that's how everybody should be treating our earth, Kigawi no Aski, as our mother. In response to the uh, question that uh, you have uh, raised with us, uh, we'd like to uh, share our experience uh, with uh, the weather, the weather as it, uh, as what we saw as we were growing up. And it's appropriate that uh, we begin with the fall, because this was a time of year that uh, I remember when people got together to work together, because that's an important thing uh, to, uh, we say in our language, you know, and, uh, uh, and one of the main reasons was to prepare, you know, for continuation of life at, at that time. And like, for instance, uh, what I remember was the importance that our ancestors or families, you know, placed on the elements as provided by Mother Nature. And the most important of which is water. You know, we used to go camping, uh, harvesting, uh, and we would camp almost any place. Water was easily available anywhere. You know, you can harvest, uh, you know, use it and for your daily meal and feed your uh, water your horses, your, your, any other animals that you had. You, you needed water, and I used to get a kick out of uh, because some of the elders told us one time. He says, "Someday you will see the day when you have to pay for water," and everybody thought it was, you know, so uh, it was uh, preposterous to think that way. But look where we're at right now, you know. It, you cannot, uh, you cannot go into the slough, the lake, you know, just and start drinking water. And the, that water is contaminated. And why? It's because of humankind has uh, done things, you know, to uh, for other uh, reasons, and uh, and some of it is scary. Water, water. Like uh, it used to provide us uh, fish, clean fish, healthy fish, but now most of the rivers and lakes, you know, they, the fishes that uh, that we harvest from there, are somewhat diseased or contaminated, and you can't you can't uh, eat them anymore. And the same thing with animals, moose, elk, and stuff like that. They the, their meat is uh, contaminated, and you cannot eat that. That them like we used to, 
and and I don't know what we're going to have to do to uh, to uh, bring it back to where it, even close to where it, to what it used to be. The, and even even the fruit that we uh, the the food that we grow, it was it was healthy, but not anymore. You know, it has to, there has to be some uh, something else that that is done to make it healthy. So we we have uh, we've got a lot of things to to un learn, I guess, to relearn. We used to uh, like this time of the year. We'd be finished uh, doing our berry picking and just preparing for um, for the winter. And uh, what they used to do was uh, my dad and uh, neighbors would come together and or uh, rent this big machine for cutting. They used to haul wood, and then they would cut them. They go from house to house, and a lot of them were did their finish their farming and getting everything ready for winter. And um, we'd have a big feast. The ladies would come together and cook a big meal, celebrate like. And then in the winter, you, after you do all your vegetables from the garden, you, you prepare them. We used to bring them to the cellar. We had a little cellar and I was the one that had to go down there because I was the smallest one. Mm with carrots. There's only potatoes, carrots, and turnips, and corn. That's all they grew in those days. Not like nowadays, we, we have tomatoes and cucumbers and stuff like that. Yeah, there was a lot in our days. A lot of what? Uh, like berries. What kinds of them? Blueberries, Saskatoons. Raspberries, yeah, raspberries choke cherries, cherries gooseberries. Choke cherry, yeah. Yeah. All of those, there were lots of those. Mm. We didn't go far, like for us. It was behind our house, and you just go a little bit further, and there was some berries there we had. Mm. We used to go to this place called, uh, I forgot again. Sandy Hills. Sandy Hills, there's a berry country there. There's blueberries, all kinds. we go there by wagon, and we'd pitch a camp. And then camp over, and then Dad would go. My stepdad would go snaring rabbits, put snares all up, and go and hunt for deer. My mom and me and the other boys would pick berries, blueberries, but they were small, not as big as what they are now. Those were more healthier than the, what we picked there. There's medicine in them, and they say. In the, in our community here in Sand Lake. By the river, they, there was always, always uh, berries there available, blueberries. You can depend on, on that piece of land you know, to produce that annually. And there's another part, uh, another part to the northwest of, of the community. But beyond that, they knew where to go uh, to collect uh, and gather blueberries and Saskatoons and choke cherries and, and and every one of them were identified and used, you know, because of the elements that they produced and, and gave to the diet, and to the diet of the people. You know, uh, I don't remember people having uh, having uh, any uh, like um, problems with their with their number two, <laughs> for instance. You know, uh, when uh, they had the problems with that, they also knew where to get the, the medicine, you know, to help uh, them uh, get back to being healthy, you know, the, uh, the, the natural salt of Mother Earth. So nothing, nothing that was bought, it, they, used, uh, they used what Mother, Mother Nature uh, gave them. So it was quite healthy in that way. And now you can't do that anymore. And even with, um, see, that's in the fall, the preparation in the winter time, they would uh, again uh, do other things. Like uh, I know the ladies used to make their costumes, their clothing and stuff like that and, and uh, stay up. By the way, in every, every season, they used, uh, 
they did these things uh, to teach the young people how how to how to uh, pick berries, how to um, can berries, how to prepare them, and stuff like that. The young people learned that, and it was passed on to them. You know, and each season they did that. I think uh, the paradigm that we should all work towards is to live in harmony with each other and to live in harmony with Mother Nature and not to get control over each other or to get control over Mother Nature. And Mother Nature is going to win anyway. Look what's happening with uh, the forest fires uh, nowadays and there isn't a darn thing they can do to try and stop a forest fire, you know coming over the mountains and stuff like that. They can't do it, you know. And again, the other thing is uh, water itself is supposed to be a, a life source, life source. but uh, if you don't use it properly, look what happens with the floods. They can just destroy, you know, destroy and uh, remodel itself, Mother Earth, eh? And, and uh, there's another one, er earthquakes, for instance. They can't do anything on that. But can you imagine, envision if you can, you know, if we were to learn how to live in harmony with those four forces of nature. Tornadoes, too. Yeah. You know, my God, yeah. But the other night, uh, last night, as last a matter of fact, just... the, the storms, that the, the lightning, holy smokes, it harnessed the, that power, that energy, you know, to use it to, uh, in your daily life, you know, instead of paying for all all the money, you know, so I think that there is something that we should l uh, relearn. How how do we uh, how do we uh, make use of those? Because I don't think that uh, the uh, the weather uh, the weather itself as we are experiencing today was the creator. I don't think intended to use that as a weapon, but for us to learn from it and to live in harmony with it, you know. So many changes have happened, and I don't think they're for the good. You know, uh, I think if we were to uh, relearn some of that, you know, mm -hmm. instead of commercializing it, you know, to for benefit rather than uh, money, uh, I think we would be a lot better off. I I think. Uh, the, uh, the paradigm that's uh, being developed around mankind is uh, to make as much money. Yeah. What are they trying to do? Is go travel to the moon now? For what? You know, when all the uh, when all what we need to survive are, is here on Mother Earth. And just r rather let's nurture them, live in harmony with them. I think. Like uh, for instance, I have this belief. Right now. The world is uh, being uh, challenged by COVID. I kind of believe that there is a cure out there somewhere, and probably our ancestors would have already found found uh, found uh, what to use to to cure that, because they had uh, diseases that they combated and they they beat. And just by using uh, what Mother Nature uh, produced. And if we can live in harmony in that way, I think that we can be much, much better off, you know, instead of taking uh, control. You know, you know I, I really believe that. And, like we, uh, we had our little swimming holes uh, uh, by by the creek, we go and we go and uh, swim there with the water snakes, the garter snakes. You know, and have fun with them. You know, mm -hmm. so and they they had their own territory. We did too, so it was fun in that way. But now you can't do that anymore. You can't do that uh, to go in the water. God knows what the water's been. Uh, mm -hmm. You know what it has as its elements. You know, you could have skin diseases, eh? Not nice anymore. In, in the summer, it was, uh, I remember the wonderful summers, you know, 
like you can travel anywhere and to go and pitch up your camp you know without worrying about the weather I think it was fantastic but not anymore you know not anymore there was lots of snow too lots of snow yeah. and uh, and the snow they would melt you could you could drink it you can drink the, the water from the snow yeah you can't do that anymore it was clean <laughs> in those days and eh? I remember yeah. it's all snow. And they lived all their lives ac accordingly. Uh, another And another favorite pastime was they would visit one another. Mm -hmm. Now you don't see that, people visiting, visiting one another, tell stories at night. No? Yeah, they tell stories and play games. 